Cannon, a victory today clinches a winning season. Jeff Greer has been on a roll, averaging 18 points a game the past two games. Today he goes nose to nose with his brother because number 25 for Pittsburgh is Ricardo Greer. It's Pittsburgh and Rutgers next. <laughs> We do mean warm welcome to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Two teams coming off possibly their best games of the year. The Scarlet Knights taking on the Panthers. We welcome all of you inside Fitzgerald Fieldhouse this Saturday afternoon along with Dick Kuchin. I'm John Sanders. Very important game for the Scarlet Knights. The NIT very much in their future, maybe even possibly the NCAAs. Well, it's a big ball game for both teams, but particularly for Rutgers. I mean, they do have a good hard look at the NIT, but if they can get on a little bit of a roll, John, at the end of the season, the NC2A is realistic. The other thing that makes this game special this afternoon is the annual and sometimes twice a year matchup of the Greer brothers, Jeff and Ricardo. Well, it's a little bit unusual when you get two brothers going against each other, and these two guys are both influential on their ball clubs. And you can look at the numbers, you can see it's going to be a great matchup. Jeff, of course, wears number 25 for Rutgers, and it's his brother Ricardo wears number 25 for the University of Pittsburgh. Two other guys we'll watch today. They're not brothers, but they are kindred spirits because they're both freshman point guards, Brandon Knight and Todd Billet. And their, their careers have paralleled each other. Both New Jersey guys, both excellent guards. They both lead their team from the point guard position, and it's really critical that they both are, get off to a great start. We'll be following both of those matchups this afternoon from Pittsburgh. Big East Conference Basketball. Scarlet Knights of Rutgers, the Panthers of Pittsburgh. We'll have the starting lineups right after this. We are in Fitzgerald Fieldhouse on this very warm Saturday afternoon. Set for Big East Conference Basketball. Starting lineup for the 15 and 11 Scarlet Knights trying to get to 500 in conference play. The freshman Todd Billet along with the sophomore Dante Jones, Jeff Greer, Rashad Kent, who is a West Virginia native, and then Eugene Dabney. Dante Jones has carried much of the load offensively for Rutgers, also does the job defensively as well for head coach Kevin Bannon, now in his third season. This is a guy, though, you look back over his career already, 324 career victories. He has plenty of coaching experience, starting lineup on senior day, even though they have one more home game. This is senior day for the group of Holmes and Lockhart, along with Knight and Greer and Chris Seabrooks. Boy, there's a guy that has really carried the load for Pittsburgh, despite really not playing much at all last year. He's averaging over 31 minutes a game this year. The head coach has been Howland, been in his first season. He is down to eight players, Dick, on his squad. It's been a struggle for them personnel-wise. The referee is John Cowell. Rusty Herring and Fran Conley are the umpires, and we're set for basketball. This should be a good, a good game. It really should be. I mean, these two teams are pretty evenly matched. Todd Billett playing with uh, much more confidence in the last five or six games. His offense has improved. His ball handling has improved. Of course, that's because he's really not a freshman anymore. He's got 26 Big East games under his belt. And that does make a difference, John. You know, the more experience a guy gets, uh, you know, all of a sudden these guys turn into sophomores real quickly. Here is Jones outside. Only a sophomore, but he has been the go-to guy for the last couple of seasons for the Scarlet Knights. Billet rolls it inside to Kent. He was fighting off Seabrooks, and they turn it over. Good job that time defensively by Seabrooks, you know, uh, to create the turnover because that's exactly what they're going to look to do. They're going to look to go at Seabrooks early in this basketball game. Seabrooks, of course, represents most of the inside strength for this team. Zavatkas, who will come off the bench this afternoon, is 6'8", but the real power is the guy with the ball briefly there, Seabrooks. Greer for three at six of these in scoring 33 recently at Syracuse. Misses his first opportunity this afternoon. The matchup between the Greer brothers individually, and Ricardo's had the better of it. But uh, Jeff's team has won the last three games. In somebody pushing away from the basketball. And the foul is going to go on Chris Seabrooks. That is his first. First foul for either team. We're scoreless in the first minute. Jeff Greer gets it inside to Kent. Draws a double team, but using his power, forces it up, misses the tip, and down comes Seabrooks. You know, three possessions, three times are looking to go down inside deep to Kent. So you can see what the Rutgers' philosophy is in this basketball game. Holmes coming off his career game, and that's going to be a foul, I believe, on Dabney as he got hooked up that time with Seabrook. So Eugene Dabney picks up number one. Dabney has only fouled out one time. Seabrooks has fouled out three times this season. Neither team has scored in the first couple of minutes. Holmes 
misses everything and Kent got a piece of that one as he hit the deck. Big East basketball on this Saturday afternoon. Other games and every game of course is critical right now. Providence pulls out a 45 40 win over Boston College. And 87 74. How about the Wildcats of Villanova. They are making some noise in the conference. They already have a good RPI rating that will not hurt it. Lockhart's first three of the afternoon is good. The senior hits his first triple. And Greer immediately is down. I'm not sure what happened to him under the basket. He hurt his ankle in the victory on the road at BC during the week, and now he's holding his mouth as he gets up, and Ben Holland is going to come out. Tony Solisi, the trainer, started out, but Ricardo says, I'm okay, let's go. And with the, with the numbers that... Uh with the numbers that Pitt has, and you could see he just gets hit, you know, inadvertently, but man, that can be painful, you know, and he goes down. But with the numbers right now that Ben Howland has on his ball club, he can ill afford to lose anybody in his basketball game. But Greer, who said before the game he'll play no matter what in this game, and that time Dante Jones tried to make a move with the ball before he caught it. Second turnover for Rutgers. Scarlet Knights really improved in that area. Only turned it over 11 times in their recent win over Georgetown. Maybe their best game of the season. The Panthers also played very well down the stretch in winning at Boston College. Their first road Big East win this year. First time they've come from behind in the closing minutes to win a game all season. They hit their free throws, they hit their shots, something they have not done in the clutch much this season. Shot clock winding down to 12 now. Knight spins in the lane, scoops with the left hand, missed the shot, Seabrooks with a follow. That's a great effort by Seabrooks inside after that little pick and roll to recover on that shot and put it back in. Stayed with it, got the basket. Pitt has the first five points this afternoon. Dabney on the perimeter, wearing that knee brace on his right knee. He is a redshirt freshman. Played a few games last year until he got hurt and decided to redshirt the season. But he's back and playing more and more as this season goes along. Jones out in front. Scarlet Knights have not scored in the first two minutes and 45 seconds. Leaner won't go. Seabrooks has the rebound. And down at the other end, it's Dante Jones who can't get back up. So right now it's a five on four. Holmes for three, no good. Rebound Kent. And now they'll get the timeout. Dante did not move after he went down, trying to scramble after he took that shot that missed. So he is down on the court. So right away we've had a couple of bodies on the court here in Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. We really have, and it's something that you obviously don't like to see early in the basketball game and, and, uh, or at any time during the course of the ball game. And if you take a look at what happened here, he was penetrating tough to the baseline, okay, and he comes in, kind of got a little bit out of, troll, out of control, and when he came down, he kind of came down funny, John. Yes, he did. He either came down on his ankle or his knee. And you can see that he is in pain. They're going to check, it uh, looks like his right ankle, maybe he twisted it when he came down. Yeah, he, he just got bumped a little bit, not enough to cause a foul, but, you know, when you get in that position and you're hanging up that high in the air and you come down, it, it, uh, it puts you in a tough spot unless you, uh, you know, just come down properly. In the meantime, the assistant coach is trying to get the rest of the players to come over to the bench. Kevin Bannon had gone all the way down to check on Jones, and he is being helped off the court right now. Eric Breidenbaugh is the Scarlet Knights trainer. This is what happened to Greer, R Ricardo Greer. You have to separate the two. It's what happened to him in the closing moments of that win at BC. But he played the rest of the game limping as he was. Jones limps off. So on to replace him now. Here comes Luis Flores. It's him with the basketball, number 33. He's a freshman. He's also from Washington Heights, New York. As Kent powers his way inside, misses the shot, gets it back, puts it up, misses again. One more try. Still another try, no good. There is a lid on it as far as the Knights are concerned right now. Here comes Greer stepping inside and drawing the foul. Ricardo and his brother Jeff, both from Washington Heights, and we mentioned the freshman, Luis Flores, also from that neighborhood. You know, you see Seabrooks right here go up and rip the ball off the glass. I mean, he is playing lights out right now for the Pitt Panthers. That, by the way, was the second foul already on Eugene Dab Dabney. And Joel Salvi is going to have to check in as Greer hits the free throws. That's something Pittsburgh did down the stretch to help him win that BC game. They went on a run at the end. They won it basically at the foul line, and that's something they have not done so far this year. 
And, John, it's a critical part of the game. I mean, you know, the teams that do shoot well from the foul line and can cash in uh, really put themselves in a good position to win. Greer's first two points come at the line, and the 7-0 run continues for Pittsburgh. You see Salvi on the court with the headband, but uh, he has really toned down the hairdo. All of his followers there at the rack are going to have to get new wigs. Flores gets inside. Too strong. Tip no good into the hands of Greer. Panthers now looking at a four on three. Knight waits, looks in the corner for Holmes. Now they'll reset in half court. We played almost four minutes, four scoreless minutes for the Scarlet Knights. Knight, younger brother of Brevin, and of course Todd's older brother Jeff was the point guard for four years. So they're going to have eight years of billet at the point. Ten seconds on the shot clock for Pittsburgh. Knight goes to Holmes for three. And he hits it, so Holmes gets the three-pointer. The Panthers have scored the first ten points of the game. And here's a real value of a point guard. I mean, penetrating the clock shots winding down and kicks it. Salvi was fouled as he took it to the basket. And the foul goes on uh, Ricardo Greer. That will be his first. Takes us to our first timeout. 15-35 remaining in the opening half. The Panthers have scored the game's first ten points. You're watching Big East basketball. Cheering after each basket made by a Greer, no matter whether he's in white or scarlet this afternoon, because there is a large contingent that have made their way from the Bronx here to cheer on the Greers, Ricardo and Jeff. And Bell, Ben told me yesterday that there were two busloads that came over, and uh, but anytime number 25 scores, that's right, they're going to let you know it. Jeff and his teammates are 0 for 8 shooting so far, and six of those shots have been taken by Kent. Flores outside, looks to Jeff Greer. We just call him Jeff and Ricardo from here on out. How's that? There's the shooting numbers we spoke to. Rashad Kent sets the screen for Billet. Out of Greer. Goes Salvi outside, goes back to Jeff Greer, right on the line, comes up short, rebound to his brother Ricardo. Back comes Pittsburgh. They don't have the numbers, and he almost lost the handle. Saves it to Lockhart. We played five minutes, and the Scarlet Knights are scoreless. Ouch. Well, it's not the weather that's bothering him. They've opened up the doors at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. It is very warm inside this building this afternoon. Zavatkas outside. Now Ricardo Greer. Quick move on Sally. A runner too strong. There's Greer with his own rebound. Has a strip on the way back up. Here come the Scarlet Knights. Flores steps down the lane. Goes back to Billet. Squares for three. It's a little short. Ricardo Greer the rebound. And right now, Rutgers has gone stone cold. I mean, they just can't buy one. They're getting pretty good looks. Uh, and just not converting. Down 10-0 so far, over five minutes in. The Scarlet Knights are 0 for 10. <laughs> All you can do as a coach, you've been there, there's nothing you can do. Well, there really isn't, particularly when you're getting the looks that you want. They came out wanting to get the basketball down inside to Kent. They did that. Bill just got a look, you know, a good, good looking jump shot. Uh, Greer's had a good looking jump shot look. They just have not fallen their shot. Can you talk to Coach Bannon or any of the coaches for the Scarlet Knights as we did before the ball game? People like Danny Hurley and uh, Walt Towns. Ted, Todd Kowalczyk, uh, they know how important this game is. A very slow start after a terrific effort in the win over Georgetown. Now they've got numbers. Greer takes the feed, has it stripped away and out of bounds. Good hustle at the defensive end to stop the breakaway by Greer. It really was. Holmes did a good job to get back and, uh, you know, just get a hand in there. Seabrooks had been out briefly. He comes in as Holmes goes to the bench. Zavatkas, as I mentioned, is on the court. Flores hanging and on the way down, right at the bottom of his leaf, he took a shot. Lockhart for three. Good. The Panthers' third three pointer. They have the first 13. And Kevin Bannon has seen enough. He's going to call a timeout. His team has not scored in the first six minutes and 16 seconds of the game. Pittsburgh leads it 13 0. We have a full timeout. The Panthers have romped to an early 13-0 lead. Young man, Chris.
Chris Seabrooks, the sophomore, who didn't play much last year, but he is really battling tough inside. Well, you know, he's got probably six, seven rebounds right now, and that's what he's averaging, but you can see he gets way above the iron, and it's really fun to watch a player like that develop. You know, after he comes off last year, he doesn't get very much time. He's got the body, you know, and he really is a guy that I think is going to just continue to improve as a basketball player. He's got a chance to be a very, very good player in this league. Though. Well, without Isaac Hawkins, he has had no choice. Worrell, who was Derek Worrell, was on the team earlier, provided some size. Uh, he was dismissed from the team. The Panthers have had to dismiss a couple of players. And of course, injuries have eaten into their numbers. That's why they dress only eight. Hold for 11 shooting for the Scarlet Knights, 15 on the shot clock. Flores goes baseline, puts up a jumper, and there it is. Finally, the drought ends. Lewis Flores gets Rutgers on the ward, ending the 13-0 run to start the game. Well, that's a monkey off their back, huh? It really is. And they made a decision to go down inside. It's just that Kent's had a tough night, you know, down in the block area. Seabrooks with a fadeaway, won't go. Rebound goes to Salby. Here comes Billet in traffic on the wing to Greer. Back to Salvi. Inside the arc. Puts it up. Rimming no good. And a rebound by Lockhart. Back comes Pittsburgh. One for 13 shooting to start the afternoon. Not good for the Knights. All the way to Knight for three. He's got a three-pointer. Knight gets his. That's the fourth three-pointer by Pittsburgh here in the first half. They have their biggest lead up by 14 now. Oh, the Knights got to be a little shell-shocked, Dick. They really do, but Pitt is doing a great job defensively, doing a great job on the defensive backboards, one and done. And you know what? They're taking advantage of the fact that they're getting good offensive sequences down this end and knocking shots down. And all five starters have scored for Pittsburgh. Zavatkas had it knocked away by Salvi, but it's stolen back by Brandon Knight. The Panthers get the basketball back. Only two points in the first eight-plus minutes this afternoon for Rutgers. Lockhart has two threes. Holmes and Knight each have a three-pointer. Holmes coming off his best game ever when he scored 14. They go inside over the top for Seabrooks. Oh, Pittsburgh continues 18 to 2 to start. And that's a great look by Knight going over the top, you know, to Seabrooks down inside. And Jones is going to check back into the lineup for the Scarlet Knights. Kent has it stolen by Knight. the pack and so is the pass it's out of bounds three turnovers each way a timeout with 11 16 remaining in the half kevin bannon's team really struggling at the offensive end it's 18 to 2 you're watching big east basketball Seabrooks just working together perfectly to convert for two down inside. And you know, Seabrooks kind of draws his attention a little bit. And it, it's a pretty good sign when two guys that are uh, players like these young guys can look at each other and uh, really get the job done. Some more changes for the Knights as Kareem Wright, a freshman from Lansdowne, PA, has checked in for the first time along with Renardo Brown. He's a junior, a junior college transfer out of Flint, Michigan on the court right now. And right now, it's stolen away again. Seabrooks comes up with it. Kevin Bannon looking for anything that's going to click offensively. Well, Rutgers is struggling, struggling offensively, uh, to say the least, right now. Lockhart, who along with Holmes, was honored. And this is senior day here at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Seabrooks powering against Wright, turns, shoots off the glass, misses, and Kareem Wright has the rebound. It's a good solid move by Seabrooks down inside. You know, I think once he gets to the point where he can maybe, you know, convert on the uh, skill shots, he's going to be a heck of an offensive threat. Todd Billet is out of the lineup right now for the Scarlet Knights. As is Jeff Greer. They have made wholesale changes, and that is a tough foul outside against Chris Seabrooks because it's number two on him and the big guys don't like to make fouls out in that area. Well, and that's really a mental area. Era. You know, he's away from the basket. He's guarding a guy that's probably not going to shoot the basketball and, uh, you know, all of a sudden he reaches in and, uh, you know, and pounds him. It's an and easy call for the officials. Griffin Abel, number 24, is checked in for Pittsburgh as the Knights throw it away. It was tipped. 
says Rusty Herring. So it's still going to be Scarlet Knight basketball. You saw Holmes was like a defensive back. He just bumped the Rutgers Knight player out of bounds to make sure he didn't get to the ball, but it still belongs to the Scarlet Knights. But it's going to be inbounded at midcourt. And Dante Jones is back on the court. There's the move by Holmes. Because he thought it was going to be Pittsburgh basketball, but it is not. Ben Howland pacing in front of the Pittsburgh bench. John Kyle, the referee, has gone over to the scores table. I'm not sure if they want to check the shot clock or the game clock. Apparently they're going to work on the game clock a little bit. It says 10-16 remaining first half and only two points in almost 10 minutes for Rutgers. A disastrous start for the Scarlet Knights. It was right outside. Dante Jones inside to Joel Salvi, almost stolen by Griffin Abel. Salvi backs away as the shot clock now winds down to 12. Leonardo Brown. We've got a hold inside. That's going to go on Griffin Abel. It'll be his first. A transfer from Pittsburgh Titusville, who's had all kinds of injury problems, a walk on. And that's a tough matchup right now down inside for Pitt. You know, uh, with Seabrook's on the bench. Bernardo Brown goes to right, knocked out of bounds that time. By Knight. We talked about the bloodlines of Knight, and of course for Kevin Bannon, you look at Todd Billet, his brother Jeff is now an assistant coach. Here's Jones, a little short. The putback goes in the right spot at the right time was Luis Flores. They gave it to. Good looking rebound that time by Flores. He did a good job of getting to the offensive backboards and tipping it back in. And I'm sure Rutgers is thinking about hanging around right now. You know, uh, in this last nine minutes of the half. So all four points here in the first half belong to Flores, who got that put back that time on the miss by Jones. Ricardo Greer set to check back in for the Panthers. His brother is still on the bench. Outside shot misses badly. Back down by Renardo Brown. Back come the Scarlet Knights. They'd like to put together a couple baskets in a row for a change. And Todd Billet is going to go to the scores table. He will return for the Knights. With 8 to 46 left in the first half. Rocky offensive start. Flores hangs, shoots, bending, no good. Gets his own rebound. Shoots. Zavatka's got a piece of that one. Scramble for the loose ball out of bounds. And it belongs to the Knights. So the Scarlet Knights will keep it. I'll say one thing about Griffin Abel. He gets his money's worth every time he gets on the court. He is the scrapper. There's Ricardo Greer checking back in. He'll be followed shortly by his brother Jeff. You know, he gets his money's worth, but you can really tell the difference on the defensive backboards when Seabrooks goes to the bench. You know, right now there's been a lot of second shot attempts by Rutgers. And they had taken that away earlier in the basketball game. Jeff Greer off the glass. No good. Too strong. The rebound brought out of there by Brandon Knight. 18 to 4, Pittsburgh. This is hard to believe the way the Knights played in their last game against Georgetown. They scored 88 points in that game against the Hoyas tough defense. This afternoon they've scored four in almost 12 minutes. Greer. And the Panthers will keep it on the possession arrow. Ricardo was looking for a foul, did not get the call, so Pittsburgh keeps the basketball. Well, they isolate with Greer down inside, and um, you know, all of a sudden, he's in a situation where he gives a little pump fake, but they did a good job of uh, getting hold of the basketball. Knight pushes ahead. Tried to go back to Abel, and he was not there. Billet picks it up for Rutgers. Stops for three. Pops and hits it. A big, big basket for the Scarlet Knights. Todd Billet with his 60th three-pointer of the season. And the Panthers are going to take a timeout. It will be a 30-second timeout. 18 to 7 is the score. And that time the bad pass was costly to the Panthers. It is, but this is what Todd Billet does well. You know, he gets a little bit of room and he can fill it up. And he's a guy that really they have to call on right now to do some scoring because he's really capable as an outside shooter. Had a 31-point game earlier this season. Very close to a Rutgers freshman record. But 
Kevin Bannon really in this first half in the first 12 plus minutes, Dick has just been looking for somebody who can put it in the basket. And he has tried different combinations. You know, he tried to go down inside early to uh, Kent and, uh, and isolate on him. They tried to isolate Salvi down inside. I've been very, very impressed with the help defense that Pittsburgh has been able to give down in the post. And uh, they've had tough, tough, tough times getting shots down in there. A mini run by Rutgers. They've scored the last five points. Pittsburgh's had the better of it, though, overall, shooting 50% in threes. And Rutgers is one of the better teams in the league in defending the three. Not only are they one of the better teams shooting threes, they are one of the better teams defending the three. Knight bangs into Jeff Greer. They go back. Griffin Abel. Savatkis spins toward the baseline, works his way inside, shoots an air ball, and that was an easy offensive rebound that Greer could not hang on to. That's unusual for him. Jones doesn't get the roll. Put back is going to be off the mark. Salvi was right there. There is definitely a lid on that basket. Griffin Abel will pick up his second personal foul. You know, it's amazing, all right? I mean, they're shooting the basketball pretty well. Nice soft touch. Doesn't go down. Salvi gets the rebound, goes up. It's sitting on the rim, even though he gets fouled, okay, and doesn't get the roll. It's been that kind of half so far. Salvi is a senior. Just his second season in the program out of Allegheny Junior College in Maryland. He is a guy that brings high intensity to the court. He has a huge following back there in Piscataway as Seabrooks checks back in. Mike Thompson has also checked in for Rutgers for the first time this afternoon. So Kevin Bannon digging deep into that pinch early on. He's already used more players than Pittsburgh has. Salvi a pair at the line. It's his first two points, and the run continues. It's a 7-0 run for the Scarlet Knights. They have cut it down to nine. Run. The Scarlet Knights have scored the last seven, Dick, to scratch their way back into it. And they're a team that can come back, you know, but you got to get back two at a time. When you start out like the Scarlet Knights did, when you just can't buy a basket, you know, you really have to be patient offensively, still get good shots, and you have to make sure you really keep your defense and defensive rebounding consistent. Ten different Knights have been on the court so far in this basketball game, and remember, Pittsburgh only has eight players in uniform, so that's a little lopsided in that category, but of course, Kevin Bannon has had to go deep into his bench trying to find somebody that can put it in the hole. Greer for three. Off the mark. Rebound by Thompson. Billet pushes to Jeff Greer. Beautiful move, but he missed everything. It goes out of bounds. Touch last by Salvi. And the Panthers will get it back. Maybe in a little bit of a hurry that time. Yeah, he got a little bit out of control. You know, he just tried to do things too quickly. I thought Billet made a nice pass to him. Not much offensively. Neither Greer has made a field goal this afternoon. Ricardo has two points because he hit the two free throws. Lockhart has a couple of threes. That's too strong, but it comes all the way back to midcourt. And the Panthers control. Six minutes and 20 seconds remaining. Shot clock, though. It did not hit the rim, remember. So Knight's going to have to put it up. Tries to go inside. Does. Seabrooks with a miss from point blank range. And that is foul number three on Chris Seabrooks. Not a good foul. That's two of his three fouls, Dick. You don't want to make. Really. And, and, you know, the problem with it is, is they don't have a lot of depth at that position, you know. And he's making a good, aggressive basketball play. But really, the one that hurt him was the second foul where he fouled at the top of the key. And, uh, uh, now he's got to go to the bench and sit down, and I think it really puts Pitt at a disadvantage. Because he'll probably have to set out the last six minutes of the half. Here is Billet. Thompson. Salvi gets inside and misses again. Thompson the putback, bending no good, tipped up by Salvi, and Lockhart tracks it down. Here comes Jarrett, one of the two seniors on her today, to the other one. Holmes in the lane, finds Knight, steps around the three, leans in, tries to draw the foul, does not. Greer got it up and under, and he'll go to the line. So Greer picked the ball out of the air and will go to the line. Fouls on Thompson. You know, Greer just amazes me. Uh, and he's got that thick body, you know, for a kid his size. But it's really an art to gain that kind of position inside where you can get after the after the basketball on the offensive glass. Well, he does it so well. He is one of the best in the league in rebounding overall, and especially in offensive rebounds. This is one area, though, 
which the Panthers have really struggled. They had that great game against Boston College. When they hit 19 of their 27 free throws, that was their best game ever. Overall, they're only shooting 56% from the line in the Big East. And I talked to Ben about it yesterday. I know it's something that really troubles them. They work on it in practice, and, uh, but it's one of those things you can wear on your mind as a player. You know, it's a mental thing as much as it is a physical thing. Back to a 10-point lead, 19 to 9. Panthers have been up by as many as 16 points. Billet draws the foul and gets the basket. The foul goes on Knight. Billet gets his second field goal and a chance to go to the line. And right now, Billet, okay, is the guy that's really making some things happen uh, right here. He gets a nice high post screen, comes inside, hesitates a little bit, kisses it off the glass and knocks it down and gets fouled. Critical play. He's a good free throw shooter. His brother was a terrific free throw shooter. He ran the offense for the Scarlet Knights for four years, and now it's turned it over to his younger brother. Had to do some checking, though, to find out if there are any more billets, and apparently not. This is it. <laughs> well, he's a leader on the floor, as Knight is also for Pitt. Panthers, though, have been dry from the field for about six minutes now since they have made a field goal. So the hot start, they have a chance to really bury the Scarlet Knights, but Rutgers has battled back. Zavatska. Holmes. Lockhart's three buries that one. Lockhart with nine points, all three pointers. Pittsburgh back to its 10 point lead, and that's going to be foul number two on Knight. Oh, Brandon out of Seton Hall Prep has a couple of fouls, and again, not many options for Ben Howland if people get in foul trouble. He really doesn't have a whole lot of guys over there to talk to. You know, uh, I think if a guy goes down or a guy gets in foul trouble, uh, you got to look at the manager maybe, huh? To say, hey, well, you know, get him suited up. Well, I'd say this for the freshman Brandon Knight. I think he said about all he wanted to say to Rusty Herring that time as he headed to the bench. And a miss on the front end by Billet. It's unusual for him. He misses the front end of the one and one, so it's still a 10 point lead. Panthers have been up, as I mentioned, by as many as 16. They were up 18 to 2. They had a big 15 to 2 run at Boston College that helped them come from 11 down to win that game. And they won it on free throws and won it by 10 points, but it was a much closer game than that. Zavatkas leans in and draws a foul. That'll be number two on Mike Thompson. Rutgers foul called against number 24, Mike Thompson, his second. Well, you know, it's a good look down inside. They get the basketball down inside, and Holmes does a good job, a little bounce pass down inside. And now all of a sudden, Zvotka tries to, you know, get that turnaround, starts pivoting. I'm not sure that he wasn't a little bit out of control when that shot was going up. So, uh, but he goes to the line. Well, he's up against the right guy, though, even though he doesn't play many minutes. Thompson has fouled out. Uh, two different games already this year, so he gets in foul trouble a lot. But Zavatskis, the best free throw shooter on the team, comes up empty in his first attempt this afternoon. And the Panthers did make all of their free throws, except for one coming down the stretch at BC in pulling out their first road victory. Zavatskis gets his first point. The lead is 11 for Pittsburgh. They have never trailed so far. Working on home. Thompson from outside. Bending no good. Tipped into the corner and tracked down by Lockhart. Lockhart, the outstanding three-point shooter, has three threes already. Abel looks to Zavakis. Steps into the lane. Puts up a shot and it goes. Seen much of that from Zavatkis lately, looking for his offense, and I guess he feels he has to at this point in time. And he's got a pretty good matchup down inside right now, with Thomas, Thomas Gordon. 25 to 12, the Panthers start another run. Greer with it against Lockhart. Dante Jones has been quiet so far, has not scored this afternoon. Of course, nobody's really scored much at all. Here's Thompson again from outside, short, rebound Zavatkis. Knocked away by Thompson. Tracked down in the corner by the Knights. Greer gets it to Billet. Here's Billet. He'll shoot a three on the run and drill it home. Don has lifted this offense by himself right now. He has nine of the 15 points. And you really can't forget where he is because he has the hot hand right now. You know, and uh, he's 
shooting the basketball well, and he knows his team needs it right now, too. Smart point guard. Ten-point game. He's made three of four shooting so far, and he's going to have to look for a shot a little more if the cold streak continues for his teammates. Abel has it stripped away as he tried to go back door. Jeff Greer on the move. Now hands to Billet. 2.45 remaining. We're in the first half on a warm Saturday afternoon in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Stepping inside is Kent. That's an offensive foul. Rashad Kent picks up the offensive foul with a 10-point lead. We will take a timeout. Two minutes and 34 seconds remaining. Kent muscling inside against Ricardo Greer, but instead picks up the offensive foul. So the Panthers will have it. They lead by 10. Two and a half to go in the half. 5-15, the Panthers leading the Scarlet Knights. Other Big East games. We touched on it earlier. Some very important games as we come down the stretch. It was Providence winning over BC 45-40 to this afternoon. And a huge win for the Wildcats of Villanova as they knock off Tommy Amaker's Pirates of Seton Hall. Other games from around the country in the top 25. Kentucky, a five-point win over Arkansas. And Maryland leading North Carolina at the half by 10. Michigan State, Indiana, a terrific matchup in the first half. Michigan State, one of the best teams in the country leading there. Tennessee up by one over Alabama in the first half. Alabama, of course, coming off a big win over Auburn. Zavatskis outside. Night. Very quiet in here today. I think it's too warm for people, huh? Of course, Pittsburgh has been up by a bunch since the game began. They scored the first 13, went up 18 to 2. Knight in the lane. That one's partially blocked. Salvi has the loose ball. Goes to Greer. And now Billet. Dante Jones for three. Too strong inside. A foul called. The foul is going to go on Griffin Abel. So he picks up three fouls and he fouls the three point shooter. Pittsburgh foul going against number But it's after the shot. His third, team nine. So it is a one and one. Well, and Pitt is very fortunate. Nabel is very fortunate that that shot didn't go down. You're you know, right. Because uh, in this basketball game where points have been very hard to come by uh, during large stretches for both basketball teams, it had been a five-point swing in the game. But the three-pointer did not go, and it was not a foul on the three-point shot. It was after the shot, and so Jones goes to the line with a chance to get on the scorecard, and he does for the first time. Another New Jersey native. You see Seabrooks has been out since about six minutes left in the first half. The lead has stayed about where it was since he left the lineup, so not much of a change, at least so far. Two for Jones at the line. The lead is nine. Lockhart off a couple of screens, but they have spotted him now as the three-point shooter. All alone is nice. Good looking look down inside. Way to get the basketball down inside tonight. He came back to it. You know, nice score by him. One of his teammates again running out to help out defensively for Rutgers on the hot shooting Jarrett Lockhart, and that left him alone. Jones with some penetration. Shot was too strong. Scramble for the basketball. Billet has it and is fouled by Holmes. The first this afternoon on Jeremy Holmes, is number one in the Big East Conference, and assists to turnover ratio. As a matter of fact, both Holmes and Knight among the leaders in the conference in assists. Pittsburgh overall is third in the Big East Conference in assists. Bill up to the line where he is so far, just one out of two. But as you see, an 80-plus percent shooter, and he gets the roll. And the second one rattles in as well. And usually Billet is shooting those furies up here. Right. You know, even his foul shots are rattling around a little bit. But they're climbing right back in this basketball game. You didn't hear a swish. You heard a rattle, but it still cut the lead to eight. 27-19. Pittsburgh has never trailed, and we've got a hold. They were hanging on to Lockhart coming inside. Jones is going to pick up the foul. 
That is his first. Right now, I mean, it's really frustrating for a coach right now. If you're Bannon right now, you're looking out there and you're just saying, well, what can we do to get it going? You know, but you want to try to keep it in single digits, you know, going into halftime, get some confidence, think that Jones is going to make a little bit of a run in the second half, you know, and maybe Kent gets going for him. Lockhart will go to the line. He'll be shooting a one and one. The Knights are in the double bonus for the final minute of the opening half because Pittsburgh didn't make any fouls early, but then they ran into foul problems with Seabrooks and Abel, both picking up three fouls in the first half. Lockhart is a 75% free throw shooter, and he's the first Panther in double figures with 10. Seabrooks out the last six minutes of the first half. And Jarrett buries a pair. 11 for him to match the total of Todd Billet. Billet, 11 of the 19 Scarlet Knight points. As we play the final minute of the opening half. 10 point lead Pittsburgh. Here comes Jones into the lane. Pushes it up, no good. Tip try, no good. Another tip try by Salvi is good. Joel Salvi gets his first field goal, and the comeback, or the putback, makes it an eight point game. And that's a heck of an effort right there on the part of uh, you know all those inside players uh, by Rutgers just to keep the basketball alive, stay after it. Convert. Panthers would like to use what's left of the clock. There's about a five second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. You're looking at the game clock winding down. Now Pittsburgh goes to work. The shot clock is at six. Abel is alone for three. It rattles out. Greer battles for the offensive rebound. He touched it last. Five seconds to play in the half. A reminder that at halftime, we'll take a look at our National Car Rental Halftime Report. We'll be looking ahead to the Big East Tournament that starts on March the 8th. Check out some more of the Big East leaders as Holmes come, comes up with a steal at the buzzer. 29-21. It's an eight-point halftime lead for the Panthers of Pittsburgh. They get off to a great start. Rutgers has battled back. We're about to start the National Car Rental Halftime Report. That will come up from Fitzgerald Fieldhouse after this. When do you first realize it? Is there a defining moment? A clear turning point? Some kind of sign? Do you choose it? Or does it choose you? When do you know you're an athlete? When you win your first trophy? Or break a record? Or is it when the thought of losing keeps you awake at night? When do you know you're an athlete? When you can't stop playing. at halftime. Wisconsin, Milwaukee at Detroit and it's They're trying to find somebody that can open the doors that are on the basket. They are doors in the field house are definitely open because it's a very, very warm Saturday afternoon in western Pennsylvania. We welcome all of you back along with the Cooch and I'm John Sanders. Let's talk about the first half. Statistically, of course, nothing there at all. Let's look at the Buick first half stats. The shooting percentage only 17 percent in the first 20 minutes for the Scarlet Knights. They're lucky to trail by only eight. They really are. John, you and I have interest rate on our credit card higher than that. Absolutely. So, uh, it's a tough way to go, but you know, they're still in the ball game. Very much so. Free throw shooting is pretty even. Panthers certainly have had the better of it in shooting three pointers. A lot of Rutgers rebounds, but that's because they've missed so many shots. Some of our stats, all of the offense early on came from this guy, number 22, Todd Billett. Yeah, and he is uh, tough. I'll tell you what, he hangs, you know, kind of glides in, gets fouled, knocks it down off the glass, and he's the really, he's the guy really that's been a catalyst to getting him back in the basketball game. And if you let up on him a little bit out of transition, and he has any kind of room at all, he'll stop, and he reads it real well. He's capable of just pulling it up and just drilling, knocking down the open jump shot. But the guy that made most of the three-pointers in the first half was the senior and leading scorer for Pittsburgh, Jared Lockhart. He had three threes in the first half. And John, you know, he really creates his own shot. I mean, he's defended pretty well right now on this shot, coming off a baseline screen, still knocks it down. And here's, a, a, you know, a good example of just finding an open guy down inside. Knight comes back and creates a play, makes a nice, easy play back down inside. Well, that's the way it's gone statistically and highlight-wise in the first half. Not much for either team to brag about, and especially for Rutgers, this is a huge game for them. They've got to find a way to pick it up in the second half. They're only down eight. We do have 20 minutes more of Big East basketball coming up from Pittsburgh. 
score. The teams are still huddled on their respective benches. Let's take a look at the leading scores. And as I said, not a lot to brag about. Lockhart has had the hottest hand for the University of Pittsburgh because he made three three pointers in the first half. And Billet at one point had nine of the 15 points that the Scarlet Knights had. Now let's go back to some of the matchups we started about started talking about rather at the beginning of the afternoon. We talked about the point guards. And there are the numbers for them so far. Billet does not have any assists, but he's had to be the scorer so far. Uh, the Greer brothers is a completely different story. We certainly, and those who made the trip from Washington Heights, expected a lot more. Well, that's why they had two halves in a basketball game. And they can turn this around right now real easily. And uh, and I would look, really, I thought Rutgers had good looks in the first half. They just did not convert. Uh, well, Towns, one of their uh, coaches came by and said, wow, have you ever seen anything like that? And he said, no. <laughs> Almost a turnover and a held ball. It will be a turnover because Pittsburgh will get it. Zavatkas getting a hand in on the loose ball. Panthers' biggest lead in the first half was 16. They were up 18 to 2, went on a 13 to 0 run to start the game. Scarlet Knights answered with a 7 0 run. They pulled back to within 8. Close as they, excuse me, they pulled back to within 7 is as close as they have been. Greer for 3. That's short. And the two Greers battle for the loose ball, and the Knights have it. Here's Jeff Greer. Billet looks to Daphne, who's very quiet, got a couple of early fouls. Jeff Greer's three, and it's good. Well, Jeff is the first of the Greers to make a field goal, and just like that, it's a five-point game. Well, he is, but it's interesting. You know, Kevin has got his team still looking down inside. They're still trying to isolate Kent down inside and try to get him going a little bit in this basketball game. Knight with it. Zabotka's getting the start in the second half. Seabrooks is still on the bench. He's been out since the six-minute mark of the first half, and he's still sitting. Here's Ricardo Greer. Shot clock at 10. Zabotka leans inside and has it knocked away. Out of bounds. Belongs to Pittsburgh. The shot clock, though, it has one second remaining on it. Seabrooks is on the bench, and Knight is down. Just a scramble right over there in the sideline, you know, to uh, to make sure that uh, that ball was kept in play. Seabrooks not starting the second half. He's now been on the bench for about seven and a half minutes. Tried to go to Zavatskis, and remember, they only had one second on the shot clock, so it's got to be a grab and shoot. Didn't happen. Shot clock violation, and it is Rutgers basketball. Not a good possession that time for Pittsburgh. Jones around the Kent screen. Now they switch off. Skip to Greer. Makes his second three in a row. Two halves and Greer a different player so far in the second half. The first six points belong to the number 25 in the Scarlet Knights uniform. Well, you know, usually you know, you're not going to go a whole ball game shooting 16% as a basketball team. So, you know, at some point in time, you're going to warm up a little bit. Lockhart gets inside, uses the right hand, tip won't go. Zavatkas has it blocked. And a chance for the Scarlet Knights to tie. Billet has that one blocked by Knight. Zavatkas pulls it out of the air. Back comes Holmes, pushes to Greer. Ricardo, offensive foul. That's three, a two on Ricardo Greer. John Cowell made the call, went up quickly, and that bump was enough. Well, the officials will sell a call like that, too, but it's still the toughest call in basketball is to call the block charge. Uh, but, you know, I thought the defense did a great job of holding position. Fill it around Knight. Inside Kent. Off the glass, and we are tied. So the Knights have come all the way back. Kent gets his first points. The eight points scored in the second half already by the Scarlet Knights by players who did not score at all in the first half. Well, what they're doing is they're in a situation where they're isolating Kent right now, which is what they wanted to do. And Billet makes a great play by taking the basketball down inside the wing, gets a little bounce pass into Kent. And he's such a wide-bodied kind of guy. Watch this nice little pass inside by Billet. And, you know, as a point guard, he's really done a great job coming out in the second half and, and uh, showing a lot of control offensively. 
Pittsburgh uses a timeout early here in the second half because the first eight points, two threes by Jeff Greer, had nice feed inside to Rashad Kent, who got his first basket of the afternoon. And Pittsburgh now being threatened for the first time since they started on a 13-0 run. So we can forget about that. You can forget about that 16% shooting in the first half. Pittsburgh's last field goal came with a minute and a half to go in the first half. So they are dry so far for the first two and almost three minutes of the second half. Lockhart around Jones along the baseline. It rolls home. 13 points for Lockhart. Pittsburgh by two. Kent throws it right into the hands of Knight. Numbers now for Pittsburgh. Holmes behind the back. Lockhart. They'll have to reset now as he could not handle the behind the back pass. Zabatkas and Greer. Ricardo yet to make a field goal today. Lockhart is on target this afternoon. That gives him 17, four three-pointers, and the Panthers have jumped back up by five. And I'll tell you, he's stepping up big right now the last two possessions to take it along the baseline and knock that three-point shot down. Tapped away by Zabatkas. He is a three-point shooter, a standstill shooter for the most part. So you gotta, if you're Rutgers now, you gotta locate him. He's killing it. Jeff Greer off the glass, too strong. A rebound by Knight. Three on through. Knight looks to Ricardo Greer. All the way back to Lockhart. Foul is gonna go on Jones. As he knocked Knight down. Knight was trying to set a screen, but Dante Jones picks up his second foul. And when Dante hits you, when you're coming through a screen, you know you've been hit. 6'5", 210-pounder, and he drilled him pretty good. Greer, meantime, has a shot partially blocked. There was the foul. As we come back to live action, foul is going to be called on the University of Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's going to be the second one on Jeremy Holmes. His second, team second. The line for Rutgers, number 31, Dante Jones, shooting two. That's where I think Dante Jones is really valuable as a player. You know, he's got that real quick first step, particularly off the dribble. You know, he can put it down and get down inside and cause all kinds of problems. You know, a guy his size, he's just got that great body for an off guard. One of the things that probably hurts him a little bit at times offensively and wears him down is that he is expected to cover the other team's top offensive players often and the result there is two misses at the line so it's still a five-point Panther lead Pittsburgh has the ball here's Lockhart scoops it down to Zavatkas but it's picked up by Eugene Dabney here's Billet Kent fouled by Zavatkas it's number one on Donata Zavatskis. They will put Kent at the line. He's only a 50% shooter, so that's so uh, you'd rather have him there than right under the basket. Well, Lee Brooks is about to check back in. Too. They're doing exactly what Kevin Bannon wants him to do, and that's get the basketball down inside. But you've got to convert. You know, uh, Jones did a great job of attacking the basket. Now they get the ball down inside to Kent, and he gets a chance to go to the line. But you've got to knock these things down. He did off the glass. Seabrooks is back on. Jeremy Holmes will go to the bench. One more to come for the sophomore from Fairmont, West Virginia, just south of Morgantown, as a matter of fact, the University of West Virginia. Or West Virginia University played one of their home games there this year. Who was in the lane too quickly? Somebody. Yeah, Knight got in there a little bit too quickly. It was a violation, and of course he gets another opportunity to, uh, to knock it down. Violation, Pittsburgh. Kent, just about what you would expect so far at the line, as he had made the first, missed the second. So this is another shot at his second, and he again he misses, but Dabney puts it back, bending no good, tipped up and in by Jones. Dante Jones' first field goal of the afternoon. That's a Cuts the lead to two. 34-32. We played almost five minutes of the second half. Here comes Greer. Runner along the baseline, but he's going to go to the line. 
and the number two on Rashad Kent. Takes us to an official timeout with 15 minutes and 10 seconds remaining in the game. Pittsburgh's big lead is down to two. You're watching Big East basketball. Our score, they are here from Washington Heights, New York. The one for Jeff, the one on the left is for Ricardo. The Greer brothers are matched up, but neither one doing a lot offensively, although here in the second half, Jeff has picked it up with a couple of three-pointers and helped his team move back into this game. Well, they really have, but it's a great story. You know, their sister basically raised both young men, and, uh, you know, here they wind up at two Big East schools, you know, Pitt and Rutgers doing great things in basketball, and that's just a great story. They talk quite often on the phone during the course of the season, and I'll, of course, always enjoy it when they're matched up with each other. Here comes Knight against Dabney, reverses Zavatkas for three. It's off the mark. Greer had it, tapped away by Rashad Kent. So it'll be Pittsburgh basketball with 14.55 to go in the game. The shooting for the Scarlet Knights still only 23% for the afternoon. They have improved just a bit in the second half. And Lockhart for three. That's short. Here's Greer with an offensive rebound. Seabrooks on the other side is fouled. Chris Seabrooks gets his first rebound since coming back on the court. And that goes on Eugene Dabney, who will have his third foul. So he has three. Seabrooks has three for Pittsburgh. Griffin Abel has three as well off the bench for the Panthers. Almost thrown away. Seabrooks able to save it. Maybe all these guys shoot better in cold weather, you suppose? It's too warm for them today. Zavatkis on the outside. Well, you know, Ben Howe's team, when he was at, uh, at uh, Northern Arizona, his teams were actually some of the best teams in the country shooting basketball. On the break, Kent with a finish. And that's four fouls on Seabrooks. Kent gets his second field goal, has five points in the game. We're tied, and now the Knights have their first chance to take the lead. And it's a good look to Kent, and he is strong as anything going in there taking it really hard to the rack. You like to see that because all of a sudden he's under control and gets a chance to try to convert the three-point play. Well, he's going to have to go back to the bench now that he comes on, picks up his fourth foul. Lockhart also back to the Panther bench. Abel comes on. Holmes returns for Pittsburgh. Joel Salvi set to check back in for the Scarlet Knights. Flores, who played pretty well in the first half. As a matter of fact, it was Flores who got the first two baskets. The miss by Kent, who's now just one of three at the line. Zavatkas outside. Now Greer, 34-34, 14 minutes to play. The Knights have come back from eight down at halftime to tie it up. Greer from the outside. Bingo. His first field goal. Ricardo Greer with five. Panthers lead is two. And Greer's the guy that you'd expect. Ricardo Greer's the guy that you'd expect for uh, the Panthers to step up. Billet down the lane. Into the hands of Ricardo Greer. Here comes Greer around Kent. Gets Dabney in the air and draws the foul. That's four fouls on Eugene Dabney. So both the centers now in foul trouble. They are, but that was an excellent take that time by Greer, you know, to come down and give a little hesitation fake. Uh, you know, uh, gets Dabney hanging up in the air. Head and shoulders by the defensive player. Good pump fake, staying under control, and going up, getting banged, and getting an opportunity to go to the foul line. Told us before the game he's had some treatments on that injured ankle. Feels he'll be able to go the distance this afternoon, but then he also said, I would have played no matter what. So my brother was playing. Well, you know there has to be some bragging rights there. You know, he made that comment this morning in the paper also. You know, he, he said he didn't care whether he got banged up in that, uh, that Boston College win. He was going to be ready to play in this one, John. Well, so far, he has matched his brother. Each has six points. Does not get the roll on number two. 
Three point lead Pittsburgh. Rutgers has it. Jones all the way in. Beautiful move by Jones. Got by the first defender. One point Panther lead. And that's really a basket out of transition. You know, they just beat him down the floor, beat the defense back. And uh, I don't know whether Pitt might be wearing down just a little bit. They've. Uh, Warm day. They've they, they have had a lot of guys play a lot of minutes. And of course, they've been out. Or excuse me, been without Chris Seabrooks much of the afternoon with foul trouble. He did come back briefly here in the second half and picked up number four. So he's going to sit for a while. Here's Knight as it's stripped away. Jones has Salvi with him, but it's Jones to flush. It. The Panthers will use a timeout. They have just a couple remaining now because for the first time this afternoon, the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers have taken the lead. Amazing. You shoot 16% in the first half, seven and a half minutes into the second half, you've got the lead. You know, and if you hang tough defensively and create turnovers, you know, this one's a tough one to miss. You know, this is a very high percentage shot right here that we're looking at. And he knocks it down and uh, a good defensive play, though, to create it. Jones has come alive a bit with six points in the second half, and Greer's also scored six in the second half to pick it up for Rutgers. Yeah, they have, yeah, but you know, the thing that Rutgers has done and, and, and to stay in this basketball game is they've kept their defense very consistent in the basketball game, and they've also done a very good job on the backboards. And, you know, those are the two things. You're going to have nights like both these teams are having where you don't shoot the basketball well, but as a coach, what you really need to make sure happens is you need to make sure you're consistent defensively and consistent offensively. And right now, I think the team that remains that way is the team that's going to win this basketball game. Well, I think in the first half, I don't think you credit the defense as much as you do the fact that neither team could make a basket. They had some good looks. It wasn't so much the stingy defense, although both these teams play the tough D. It was just bad shooting in the first half. They look to Greer and throw it away. Griffin Abel was looking inside, turns it over. That's number 12 for the Panthers. Pittsburgh getting themselves in trouble now, eight minutes into the second half. And John Finneman is going to check on for the first check in for the first time. Well, the trouble is stepping up and biting them because what's happening is right now they're not getting shots. You know, they're turning the basketball over and they're either creating situations where Rutgers is having offensive opportunities or converting on the offensive end. Also, consider this for Pittsburgh. You've got the two walk-ons, Abel and Finneman, who combined played in one game last year and they're expected to play at big times in this game. Kent with seven points all in the second half and Rutgers is up by three. It has turned completely in the second half. That runner is blocked into the hands of Salvi, but he can't hang on. Pittsburgh will have it. And it is an official timeout with 11 minutes and 35 seconds to play in the game. You're watching Big East basketball. The Scarlet Knights of Rutgers have scored 19 points. Pittsburgh Panthers have scored only seven in this, or excuse me, eight in the second half. And you see the Beck's beer game summary, those turnovers starting to hurt Pittsburgh. They really are, and that's where they're getting a lot of their points and easy scores off of turnovers. And uh, you know, just applying a little bit more pressure. Pittsburgh not being as careful with the basketball, but also having to go deeper into their bench. Well, Lockhart, you got to look at him with 16 points to lead the way for Pittsburgh. Thompson has returned to the lineup for the Scarlet Knights. On right now with Jones, Kent, Flores, and knocked away inside. Billet picks it up. He is the fifth of the five on the court. And now it's Rutgers on the move. Working his way inside with Jones and then a reach in foul on Jones. So Dante picks up his third. Rutgers foul called against number 31, Dante Jones. Kevin Bannon does not agree. There is Ben Howland. His team is down by three after leading by as many as 16. So what does he do about Chris Seabrook? Well, he's bringing him in right now, you know, and, uh, and, and I think it's a decision that you've got to make. You see the flow of the basketball game. Your team's not playing very well offensively. You're giving a lot of stuff up, you know, inside. You know, he's obviously said, hey, let's, you know, let's uh, see what happens right here and lay the cards on the table. Well, they've decided to go for it. Eugene Dabney, who also has four fouls, has not returned for the Knights. A little short that time. Lockhart with the three. C. Brooks gets it from Zavatskis. And going to the left eye. And nicely that time is Lockhart. 18 points for Jarrett, the senior. 
recognized before the game, playing terrific this afternoon. And Seabrooks makes a good interior pass into him. That's a big play for a center to make. Billet gets inside, goes back to Jones for three, and he buries that one. Jones with his first three-pointer. He has 11 in the game. It's 43-39. And another player shaken up just a bit. Knight is going to hobble to the sidelines. See if he can catch his breath. It looks like he took a blow maybe to that right knee. Well, you know, I think what happened is he just kind of uh, a little bit of a cramp. It's it's a warm day in here right, right, right now. And, uh, you know, he plays a lot of minutes for this basketball team. And and the for Pittsburgh, number 13. You know, we mentioned it, John, but it is really an unusual day. I know you're a Pittsburgh guy, but it, 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 I lived out here a long time ago. But it's a little bit warm. It's like a sun in this place right now. And it's taking its toll on the players. You're being kind. A little bit warm. It's excruciatingly warm in here. <laughs> Sauna this afternoon. Record temperatures in western Pennsylvania. Seabrooks. Zlatkus to Greer. Yeah, that's a costly foul. Reach in foul on Dante Jones. He's got four now. It's going to bring Jeff Greer back to the uh, Knights lineup. And Jones, who has made a couple of quick fouls, heads to the bench. And there's a whole host of players right now with uh, with foul trouble. Yes, there is. You're right. And of course, the team that can afford it the least is in the white uniform. Pittsburgh trailing now by four. 43-39. Lockhart missed the reverse. Back comes Jeff Greer. They've got numbers. Billet. Greer stolen by his brother. Ricardo on the move to Lockhart. Off the glass and good. Lockhart with 20. Pittsburgh down by two. Big time play by uh, Ricardo Greer that time. A great to turn over and get the ball in Lockhart's hands. Kicked out of bounds. And right now, at least in that particular set, the Greer brothers were playing against each other. Ricardo was guarding Jeff. Limping back onto the court is Knight. And Zavatskis goes to the bench. They've changed off so the Greers are not working against each other. Flores looks to Billet. Plenty of time on the shot clock at 25. Thompson. Flores for three. Rimming off. Knight has the rebound. Good position that time in front of Billet. Pushes it up. Almost slips. Pittsburgh now to tie or maybe take the lead. Seabrooks against Rashad Kent. Kent with the overplay saves it. The Panthers wind up with it. Here's Greer, and he is. Oh, he's fouled by his brother, but he doesn't make the basket. Jeff picks up his first foul, and that will send Ricardo to the line. Jeff Greer, his first, team seven. Well, you see the ball. It's going out of bounds. Kent does a good job of saving uh, it. They try to whack it off with Knight. He gets the basketball, fires it cross court to, uh, to Greer, and he can't make it. You can see how upset he is that that basketball didn't go down. I've determined one thing, though, after watching both halves, that the basket at this end is the troublemaker. See what I mean? Absolutely. <laughs> that was the basket in which the Knights shot 16% in the first half. Yeah, kid around about that. When I was an assistant coach at Notre Dame, Digger used to actually, in practice, chart shots that were made at each end of the floor. You know, and then you know he'd uh, he'd switch baskets every once in a while. The things weren't going the right way. And he missed them both. A chance to tie goes awry. Just four of eight at the foul line. For Ricardo Greer. Penetration by Flores with a good feed and a point blank miss by Dabney. Maybe I spoke too soon. Here comes Knight. Lockhart, long three. Hello. Lockhart with 23. He has matched his season high. He's hit five three pointers this afternoon and he has put Pittsburgh back on top. Greer goes for the steal. Billet keeps it to Thompson and back to Billet. He shot that one from downtown, didn't he? He was on the pit bench when he put that one in the air. He got the fans into it for the first time. Lockhart a steal. Greer chasing. Lockhart scoops and scores. Lockhart has matched his career high with 25 points on senior day. How about that? Right now in this 
basketball game. The defensive intensity has really picked up. The fans have gotten into it. And, you know, you see some turnovers for shots created at each end of the floor. There's a steal by Greer. Races against Billet, lays it in. Ricardo Greer with a beautiful steal. I'll be surprised if Kevin doesn't take a timeout right here. He's going to grab one. Those last two shots, easy shots down inside, come off turnovers, really changed the pace of this basketball but game. But Jared Lockhart leading the way. A Panther rally has pushed them five in front. Another steal for Ricardo Greer. He is among the all-time leaders at Pittsburgh, and there's the overplay. And a great anticipation of that pass, coming in, taking it hard to the basket, and finishing it. He's fired up right now, so is Pitt. You notice what he did when he went in for that layup. He was kind of anticipating a body being on him, so he held it just for a moment to see if he would feel somebody before he laid it off the glass. Well, and you know, John, he's strong enough to do that as a basketball player. I think that's the thing that really makes him valuable as a player. I mean, statistically, he's done an amazing job this year in and out of the league. But, you know, kids that are that strong and that powerful, they can take the hit, still be under enough control to make the shot. He's going to get a little bit of a blow right now, but he's an outstanding prospect and an outstanding basketball. Well, I really love his game. And his brother is outstanding as well. I don't think he'll be on that bench very long. I guarantee you that. And, you know, the neat thing about it is, you know, and you don't hear this enough in college basketball, they're both terrific kids, you know, and, uh, and just doing a great job in the classroom. So, it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great story. Different personalities, different kids. Dante Jones back on with four fouls. The screen from Salve goes back to Salve. He drives the lane, scoops, misses the shot. The put back, no good. And there's Seabrooks. Wow. He would have taken somebody's head off of that elbow. Well, and you know, you don't have to hit anybody. You know, if it looks like there's a little bit flagrant, they'll call the technical foul. And there doesn't have to be contact. And he's got four of them right now. And I know he's an enthusiastic kid, but he really has to play a little bit more control right now in this basketball game. Well, especially as you mentioned with four fouls. Here's Seabrooks. Backdoor Lockhart. New career. Second time Seabrooks has done that, you know, down the, the interior pass. I'm telling you right now, it's a big guy. That's a tough play for a center to make, and a solid play. After falling behind by four, the Panthers are leading by seven. But the Pittsburgh run continues. Lockhart has hit seven of nine in the second half. A block and a save. The Panthers have come to life. They've got their second win. Not only have they come to life, but this building has come to life right now. They're up and they're giving them, uh, you know, letting them know, let's keep it going. Well, I'll tell you what, it's the first time they've really been involved in the game. That quick 13-0 start before anybody could get settled, and they didn't say much. Panthers eventually fell behind by four points, but now back on top by seven. Here's Holmes. Inside Lockhart. Yes, sir. That's 29 for Lockhart. And another timeout. Having a career afternoon. The Panthers lead by nine. And they're doing a great job of finding Lockhart right now. You know he's got to feel great. Senior night. Getting a lot of help from his teammates. He really is. And you take a look at Seabrook's interior pass. A little drop pass, bounce pass, easy to control, tough for the defender to step in and make a play on it. And they've found him the last two sequences for easy shots down inside. But give him credit. He's working hard to convert. He's got 29 points. It's a career high for him. And he's working real, real hard right now as an offensive basketball player. Uh, he's made 11 out of 18 this afternoon, including five three-pointers. Well, the Panthers, who put on a push in the closing minutes to win at BC, have come to life here to open it back up by nine. And Seabrooks gets a lot of credit for that. The guy in foul trouble most of the afternoon. And really what happens is, see, this allows Ben to take Seabrooks out of the basketball game right now for a little bit of blow. Knowing that he's got four fouls and you still have six minutes to go in this basketball game. So... Well, it is the second, Dick, 13-0 run the Panthers have had this afternoon. They started off 13-0. They scored the last 13 points. Lockhart, of these 13, has nine. It has been his day. And he's like that. If you don't find him when he gets hot, you can be in trouble. I, mean, they, I think they really picked up their defensive intensity as well right now because, you know, you really feed off of that. Salve with a flush. Guy that can electrify his team. Salvi takes it in. 
scores just his second field goal, and that cuts off that 13-0 run, but Pittsburgh is still on top. 45, Pittsburgh on a 13-2 run. Let's take a look at our best plays of the game, brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people, and the best player so far this afternoon has uh, been this one right here. Well, Lockhart knocks a three down, okay, from long range. And then all of a sudden, you know, does a great job defensively stepping in and anticipating the play, you know, gets the basketball out, keeps it under control, and really attacks the basket. He has scored nine of the last 11 Pittsburgh points. And the Panthers have regained control of the game at the five-minute mark. Five-minute mark, very important to Pittsburgh. Seabrooks jump hook and it nestles in the net. Seabrooks with his third field goal. And, and as soon as Seabrooks continues to develop a move like that, he's really going to become a dominant player. Here is Dante Jones to Joel Salvi. Now Greer. Billet steps around the three, hits the two. Billet has 13, but that's his first basket in the second half. So it took him 15 minutes to get on the scoreboard after scoring 11 in the first half. 54-47. Pittsburgh has the lead. A career game for the senior Lockhart on senior day. His mom is here to enjoy this. Not quite. They're all going, but not everyone's going to fall. Hey, why not? If you're hot, put it up. Absolutely. And right now, they should give all you can get. Here comes Jones. He hits the deck as Ricardo Greer pushes it ahead. And Jeff almost intercepted for the Knights. Back to Ricardo Greer off the glass. Bending, bending good. And he's fouled. Foul goes on Rashad Kent. Ricardo Greer is in double figures with 10. Just a great hustle play, you know, uh, by Greer. He gets up in the air. He's hanging up in the air, takes the shot. You mentioned that earlier, how he does. He tries to draw that foul and then knocks it down. By the way, that makes it a double-double for Ricardo Greer, his 14th. The only player in the conference who has more double-doubles than this guy is the fellow named Murphy for Notre Dame. Isn't that amazing? This guy's only 6'5". It really is amazing. One of the statistics, he had 33, I guess, against Syracuse earlier in the year. The other guy that had 35 that holds the record for uh, visiting people was David Robinson and uh, Felipe Lopez. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, Felipe Lopez got the point. Kent does not get the roll. Will go to the line. And that's on Seabrooks, and he's gone. So Chris Seabrooks will depart. He scored six points. Spent much of this game on the bench. He departs with 3.52 to go, and we'll see how that affects Pittsburgh down the stretch. We will, but this is the gamble you take. And, and, and you know, Coach took this, and uh, all of a sudden, Kent goes by him. He gets his head and shoulders by him. And, and you know, it's just a little bit of a body contact. You know, not a real hard, aggressive foul, but uh, he played a heck of a basketball game, and uh, he's a guy that I think he's just continued to develop and improve as a basketball player. And Seabrook's fouling out for the fourth time this season. In the lineup for Pittsburgh, number 12. We'll see if Pittsburgh can do the job with him on the bench. They did against Notre Dame. They got in some foul trouble and managed to beat the Irish here in Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Two of their three Big East wins have come at home this season. Villanova and Notre Dame have been ambushed here, and they won at BC. Well, Pitt's got that 10-point lead going for them, but uh, right now they are going to need to uh, step up defensively with Seabrooks going to the bench with five fouls. Kevin Bannon and company have been looking up from the wrong side of the scoreboard since a 13-0 start in this game. And then here in the second half, the Panthers went on another 13-0 run and air ball on the second free throw. And this is an official timeout with 3.52 to play in the game. Right now it's Pittsburgh 57 and the Knights 48. Four, let's go. By Sam Adams, it's what's inside. And by Buick, isn't it time for a real car? Fifty-seven forty-eight is the score, just inside the four-minute mark for the Panthers. And we'll see uh, DeCuchin if he can hang on now with their big guy, Seabrooks, on the bench. 
Well, you know what Pitt did a great job of is they came out, you know, and were not as aggressive offensively or defensively as they needed to be. Rutgers closes the gap, and they took that blow pretty good, and they've come back, uh, you know, to, to extend the lead, nine-point lead. Now, all of a sudden, Rutgers comes out with a full-court pressure. And you saw the Providence score. Villanova also a win this afternoon, and Greer all alone in front of Salvi along the baseline. That's 13 for Ricardo. The lead goes back to double figures at 11. Biggest lead of the second half for Pittsburgh. Here's Salvi. Billet again passes on the three, shoots the two, bending no good. There is Kent with a rebound, and he's fouled. Ricardo Greer is going to pick up his third personal on that play. That's really not a bad choice if you're going to have to foul somebody. You wouldn't mind fouling Kent. He's two for five at the free throw line. It's actually a real good move. You know, uh, you put him on the foul line, he probably would have knocked down the two. And, and, you know, Rutgers will probably try to extend defensively, go full court pressure. It's really not part of their game, though. You know, they, don't, they haven't done that very much during the course of the year. They've been predominantly a half court man to man basketball team. Yeah, the one thing you don't like to do, though, in this situation is stop the clock and give the other guy a chance with that clock stop. But Kent is just two for six at the free throw line, and the freshman, Luis Flores, comes back on. He's about to come back on. The Knights need all of these they can get. And they don't get any. Knight had it, lost it. There's Jones. Dante Jones with 13. Dante Jones. There's that pressure you talked about, Dick. We'll see how the Panthers handle that. Billet picks up his first foul. So plenty of fouls to give for him, but on Rutgers, I think that's going to be 10. Ninth foul, not 10, so not a double bonus yet, but it is a one and one. The next foul on Pittsburgh will also be the bonus. There's Flores. We mentioned he had gone to the scorer's table. Is Coming off the court is Kent. Just over three minutes to play. Pittsburgh by nine and a chance to go back to double figures. Now, it'll be interesting to see. They have been probably in... No, there's no probably about it. They've been the worst team in the Big East in shooting free throws in conference play. But they turned that around completely against B.C. the other night. You know, and I watched him work out yesterday. I just got the sense, and, and even the, uh, talking to Coach Allen, it, you know, they, they're a lot more confident right now as a basketball team. And coming off the B.C. win, I think you can see why uh, they would be. Greer had the rebound, lost it, and the Panthers get it back. What a turnaround that was. Through the hands of Zavatkas out of bounds. 2.52 to go. Pittsburgh by 10. The Panthers have been aided by two 13 to 0 runs today. One in the first half to start the game and one here in the second half. Flores against Lockhart. Lost control of the basketball and is fouled. goes on Knight, his third. And that's one you don't want to make right yeah. there because it does stop the clock, puts a good foul shooter on the foul line. And, you know, the ball is loose right there, you know, and it's an aggressive play, and everybody's scrambling. So all of a sudden, it's a play, you know, you know the ball gets knocked loose, okay, down on the floor, starts rolling around. Everybody's going after it. And, you know, it's a foul that you don't really need to take, but you just do it out of being aggressive. And it's a foul that quite often won't be called. Flores hits the front end of the one-and-one. One. Shoots it at over 70% on the year. The best free-throw shooting team in this conference throughout the year has been Miami. And that's one reason the Hurricanes are right up there battling for one of those first-round buys in the Big East Championship. They could be headed to a third consecutive NCAA tournament. Two at the line for Flores. They get a couple back. Move to within eight. Greer tonight. And Ricardo can't handle the basketball if needed. They go to home. And he turns it over. Now you've got three guards on the court right now to take care of the ball, and Holmes did not do it. You do, but they're doing a good job. What they're doing is they're not just playing man to man up the floor, they're running and jumping. So there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of switching going on, and uh, they're getting the basketball out of Knight's hand, so it makes it a little bit tough. They're going to talk it over right now. The Panthers take their timeout. They are down to one. We have 231 remaining in the game. 
warm Saturday afternoon. Glad you could join us. I'm John Sanders along with Dick Kuchin, longtime Division I college basketball coach. And there is uh, Greer. He's really hung in tough. Come on strong with 10 points in the second half. Jeff Greer got his team off to a good start in the second half when he hit a couple of threes, but that has been it for him this afternoon. Still plenty of time, though. Bill it. Dante Jones. Still 20 on the shot clock. The Salvi makes a move against Greer. And they go to Jeff Greer off the glass. And good. Nice spinning move by Jeff Greer. The lead is six now. Ricardo Greer can do as he handles and then throws it out of bounds. Was it deflected? Apparently not. So another turnover by Pittsburgh. That's 16 now. And he's come at a costly point in this game. They were trying to lock it up. Well, the pressure has bothered him. There's no question about that. And this is a huge possession right here. Florence for three. Too strong. And it is Greer coming out of there with the loose ball. Is it on Jeff Greer? Fouls his brother. The Panthers lead it 60 to 54 here. A quick look at what else is happening in college basketball on this Saturday afternoon. All of the conferences heading to postseason. Kentucky a winner at home over Arkansas. Maryland has knocked off North Carolina. And look at the battle in Indiana between Michigan State and the Hoosiers. 60 to 60 in the second half. Alabama a one point lead over Tennessee in the second half and Temple rolls on. How about the Owls after knocking off Cincinnati leading UMass. Greer converts at the line. Six of ten for Ricardo. He's got 14 points in the game. He does have a double double and they are underway at Colorado State leading number 24 Utah but it's early there. He made a both. 15 points for Greer. The lead is eight with just over a minute and a half remaining. Salvi against Greer goes back to Billet. All right now just two man basketball three pointer Billet too strong. There's Greer and Zavatkis gets there but he's fouled. Wanted that to be called goaltending as well. It's going to be on Zavatkas. Jeff Greer will go to the line for the first time in the game. His brother has spent a lot of time there. And Jeff did a good job getting to the offensive backboards that time. And he misses his first opportunity. It was a two shot foul. Greer with eight points all in the second half. And he makes one out of two. That gives him nine. So Rutgers takes a timeout. Each team is down to one timeout remaining. Pittsburgh still leading 62 to 55. What are you going to look for now in the last minute 19? The, the pressure that the Knights have used has paid off pretty well so far. They need to get a little bit closer. It really has, you know, and uh, I think right now they're going to extend defensively for probably try to take away passing lanes on the inbounds pass, but you're getting to the point in the basketball game that you've got to start to think once the ball gets in the front court, maybe to take a foul if you can't get a quick steal, because you do need three possessions in this basketball game right now to get back in it. Well, even though the Panthers shot the free throws very well. In that victory against BC, uh, throughout the course of the season, they have not been a good foul shooting team. So now's the time to test them. Well, and I think they will be tested. They'll be tested under some pressure. But you can see there's no pressure on the basketball right now, and they're fronting all the passing lanes. Pittsburgh 11 of 17 in the free throw department. Rutgers is only 12 of 21. The Panthers just do get it across, and here comes Lockhart. Looks to Zavatskis. He draws a crowd, tapped out of bounds. Pittsburgh ball, 21 on the shot clock, a minute and five seconds left in the game. And right now, your opponent is the clock. You know, it's really no, no longer Rutgers. You just want to take some time, still get a good shot off before that 20, before the clock runs out. And that's going to be a foul on Greer. The third on Jeff, it will put Jeremy Holmes at the line. It's a double bonus. 
Holmes going to the line for the first time. I mentioned Jeremy coming off that career 14 point game at BC. This guy's been very steady for the Panthers, but he opened it up offensively, doing a lot of penetrating, was able to do just that, convert his free throws the other night in Boston. But he doesn't really look to score. See, he averages only about six points a game and one of two at the line. The rebound to Flores. Eight point lead. We're in the final minute. Knight jumping out against Jones. Jones is fouled by Zavatskis. Oops, instead, it's going to be on Holmes. It's going to be Jeremy Holmes picking up the foul. That will be his third. Zavatskis was not the guilty party, but the Panthers still in pretty good shape here, but critical for Rutgers now to make their free throw. It really is. And, uh, you know, I think probably what Kevin is looking for are three-point shots right now. And although that's a good move by Jones to take it to the hole, you know, you've got all your spot-up shooters out there right now. You probably want to kick it back to the three-point line. Jones at the line. Three of five now. 14 points. 12 of them for Dante in the second half. He only made two free throws in the first half. Greer and Kent did not score. Dabney has not scored in the game. Two of two for Dante Jones on that trip. He has 15. Lockhart stranded over the line and a foul call. Going to go on Joel Salvi. The first on Joel. So we're going to shoot some free throws here in the last 45 seconds. And that's the way it's going to come down. But you know, right now, Pittsburgh has done an excellent job of getting the basketball in Knight's hands against the full court pressure. You know, the matchup is Billet and Knight, and uh, Billet is getting beat to the, uh, a little bit by uh, by Knight off the full court pressure. Of course, you're in a tough situation right now, 45 seconds to go. What a game for Lockhart. That gives him 30 points, his first collegiate 30-point game ever. A terrific senior day for him. Rebound Flores, foul, and the Panthers did not need that. That's number four on Greer, and we'll walk all the way to the other end. Ouch. <laughs> that's one that's not a smart play, and you know right now that uh, Ben Hallett is just uh, beside himself uh, on that call. He's done a great job with his program. You, know, you, you consider he's got eight basketball players right now to go with. He's gotten guys in foul trouble today. Uh, got a lot of guys that are going to be coming back next year. He had a good, solid recruiting class. I think he's got this thing moving in the right direction. Well, he'll have Isaac Hawkins, who's been out with a broken leg all year. He will be back. It was a miss by Flores. He's got Jerron Brown, a non-qualifier. Chad Johnson is a transfer from Nebraska. And the three recruits, Julius Page, 6'3", out of Buffalo. Chevy Troutman, 6'7", out of Williamsport, PA. And then a big man, Torrey Morris, who is 6'10", out of Clinton, Tennessee. Those are players coming in for Pittsburgh next year. One out of two for Lewis Flores. He has seven points. We'll readjust the net and move on. Still a two possession game with 45 seconds to go. The breakaway tonight. He slips down and travels. Slipped a couple of times tonight or this afternoon. Jeff Greer returning for the Scarlet Knights. They can hit a three here. It is going to become very, very interesting. Jones has it stolen by Ricardo Greer. Greer picks his pocket and Billet to pull the foul against Holmes. Well, Billet with his second. Some of the folks will head for the warm weather that awaits them outside Fitzgerald Fieldhouse on this Saturday afternoon. The Pittsburgh Panthers looking to wrap up their fourth conference victory and put a big dent in the postseason hopes of the Scarlet Knights. But you got to remember that 17% shooting in the first half, Dick. The fact that they trailed 13 to nothing before they got out of the box. And they made the run, but it's a it's it's a tough deficit to come back from, you know, and, and shooting that kind of percentage. Uh, 
He's just not going to get it done. Mahomes did not look good on either one of those free throws. Here comes Billet against Zavatskis. <laughs> he puts him on the line. That's number three on Donatus Zavatskis. And I'll tell you, this is the kind of thing that drives coaches that are winning in a basketball game absolutely nuts. Uh, you know, it's just not the way you draw it up. You just do not want to stop the clock and put a guy like Billet, who's the, you know, one of the premier foul shooters in the league, on the line right now. He's made four or five so far this afternoon. But it is still a two-possession game, even with those two. Rutgers uses its final timeout. Pittsburgh Panthers still have one, and we still have 16 seconds to play. But Kevin Bannon has called that timeout in the hopes that he can put some kind of a clamp on Pittsburgh and get the ball back. Well, what he's going to do is he's going to come out in full court pressure. If the ball gets in bounds, he'll take a foul because it doesn't make any difference. It'll be a two-shot foul. Either the guy makes two shots, it's going to still be a two-possession basketball game. Try to look for a three on one possession, a steal. You know, crazy things in basketball happen, and that's the way coaches think. You know, and uh, they're still in this basketball game right now, and he's working them. He's coaching a little more now than he was when they were down 13 to nothing, isn't he? He just kind of sat there with his his chin on his hand. Well, I thought they were getting good shots early in the basketball game, and you mentioned that as well. And I think where uh, Coach became a little bit frustrated was, you know, in that run in the second half, they didn't play very well right there. They made some turnovers and gave up some easy baskets. 16 seconds to play. Shot clock is off. Zavatskis, the quick foul, the quick reach-in foul by Thompson, is going to put one of the best for Pittsburgh, anyway, free throw shooters on the line. Zavatskis, one out of two this afternoon. We'll walk all the way to the other end, and he'll shoot two. And all of that took one second off the clock. The line for Pittsburgh, number five, Donata Zavatskis shooting two. Jones and Greer set to return. We brought in to play at that offensive end. Brown and Thompson in there to give the fouls head back to the Scarlet Knight bench as Zavatskis looks to make it a six-point lead. And we're going to see Billet push it and spot-up shooters take some positions along the three-point line. 66-60. Billet goes all the way, finds floor, is off the glass and good. So, so much for that, huh? Rutgers basket number 33, Lewis Flores. Flores with nine. Pittsburgh does get it in. Holmes is fouled, and down goes Jones. Who took a blow in the first half, might be stunned a little bit there, but it doesn't matter because he's now fouled out of the game. Number 31, Dante Jones. Jones with 15 points, very cold in the first half, had only two points. He does come on in the second half to score 13. Help lead his team back into this game, but he goes to the bench as Renardo Brown takes his spot. 66-62, and the Panthers will shoot two. In the lineup for Rutgers, number 30, Renardo Brown. You know, it's a good take to the hole that time to cut the lead to four, but I'm curious, uh, you know, why they didn't kick the basketball outside and look for the three-point shot because you still have a two-possession basketball game right now. It's going to be tough with eight seconds to make that kind of run. And I guess you would think that if your point guard is underneath the basket, somebody on the perimeter should be open, huh? And Griffin Abel is going to go to the scorer's table for Pittsburgh, come right onto the court. In the lineup for Pittsburgh, number 24, Griffin Abel. And Zavatskis will go to the bench. Line for Pittsburgh, number 13, Jeremy Holmes. So Holmes to the line. That was better. His last two were not pretty. Doesn't get the roll on number two. Just three for seven. Here is Salvi all the way. Scooping, missing the shot. And that'll do it. The Pittsburgh Panthers have won their second in a row in conference play. They led by eight at halftime, coming back with a 13-0 run in the second half. And the battle of the Greers team-wise this time goes to Ricardo. He also outscored his brother 15 to 9. What the heck? 
Pittsburgh Panthers have defeated the Scarlet Knights. Rutgers had won three straight against the University of Pittsburgh, but not this afternoon. The Panthers behind a career day for the senior Jared Lockhart. He scored 30 points this afternoon at 19 in the second half. He was one of the keys. The Panthers held him off. Lockhart and Pittsburgh going to a 67-62 victory. For Dick Kuchin, I'm John Sanders. Again, the Panthers win it by five for our entire crew in Pittsburgh. So long, everyone.